I don't like seeing people be angry at each other. I don't, un I generally don't understand the idea that you could like be arguing with somebody where they seem like they're upset with you and then they, su and suddenly they're like kissing you. That legitimately does not make any sense to my extremely traumatized brain. Like, thanks dad. I can't, I can't see that. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And so like, I never understand those sort of couples, but I can tell when they're supposed to be that and it pisses me off. And it doesn't make sense for Percy and Annabeth to be written like that because it's not actually who they are. If you want to call the first book like the enemies to lovers section of their romance, the mm -hmm. TV show does a better job of that. Are you stalking me, Annabeth? Yes. He isn't that way. He's better than that. Maybe I was that way once, but I don't want to be that way anymore. Because, I mean, it's all the things that we talked about last podcast that people say against Annabeth. The, oh, she's too mean to Percy, she seems to be too rude, she has too much attitude. But that's actually what she's like in the books. And so it, it makes more sense when we have an Annabeth who's just like, I don't know what to feel about this dude. And he kind of gets on my nerves at first. Mm -hmm. To then jumping to, you know what, this guy actually, his moral upstanding is so good that I want to, I want to save him because that's where she eventually ends up in the tunnel of love scene. It's just, mm -hmm. this guy would refuse to leave me behind and I already know that, so I am not leaving him behind. And the whole reason she doesn't like him in the books and the show is because he is very different from everybody else. He's talking shit about... He doesn't give a fuck about Poseidon. He's like, get away from me. I want my mom. Do you know where my mother is? <laughs> and I don't care about anything else. I don't care about anyone else. I don't care about anything else. I don't like any of you. Where is my mother? The only person who's loved me my entire life. And like, that's all he cares about. And that's why she doesn't like him because he isn't playing by any of the rules. But Percy in like the movie, he's just like everybody else. He's not doing anything different that makes him stand out. So it's like, why doesn't she like him then? There's no actual reason for them not to get along because they're both edgy, moody little weirdos. <laughs> well, and I think the way that they did the TV show also sets us up for stuff that wasn't in the book so they could add in that would make even more sense to that storyline because they didn't dive so much into the prophecy. I can't remember if they mentioned it at all even. And um, so they have room next season to say, oh, Annabeth knew about the prophecy. And not only did she know about it, but Luke was kind of in her ear saying, hey, Percy might be the prophecy kid. And what if he goes the wrong direction with it? You know, what if that's why she was so hesitant to trust Percy in the beginning is something Luke said about him being a prophecy kid. That would make so much sense. The last scene of him with, you know, his uh, fun little grandfather, is his grandfather in his <laughs> I just like calling him his grandfather yeah. in his in his dreams telling him that he has to survive that his like survival is how he's going to win and so that very easily sets up them expl somebody explaining the prophecy to him in the second season without them having to be outrageously clunky about it <laughs> and yeah. like every other thing that's ever been made that's try like these movies that's tried to explain that whole thing to him yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, they when they reveal what the prophecy is in the second movie, which I did see this part, they have to age everything up automatically already. And that already feels like such a big change because, I mean, it's a big point that making it to 16 as a demigod is impossible for a lot of these people. They're literally getting chased by monsters from the moment that they find out. So... Yeah, and like part of the whole thing with that prophecy and like how you feel about it is like one thing that was kind of sweet that like the Phantom at Large did is when Walker turned 15, mm -hmm. like people were like posting photos that he had recently taken at like some magazine or whatever of him being a 15 year old. And people were posting them being like, oh my God, this is how old Percy is during the battle of, of like the last book, the last Olympian. And they're like, he was a fucking baby. Holy shit. <laughs> like, oh my God. That, like, that's how old Percy was when he was doing all of the things that happened in that book. It's, it, there's so many things that happen in that book. It's, 
so much. And so it just makes you see like how it made people sad, like thinking about somebody that young having to do all those things. And like, that's what you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to be upset that he's even having to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with like the movies is that they treat them like a, any other action movie where it's more like, oh, watch this like person do this really cool trick and how cool it is that they have these really big powers and stuff like that. And it's like, no, you're supposed to be upset that they even have to do this in the first place. Yeah. So like it, it, that's part of the whole thing that people don't like about the show too, is that the, the fights aren't that long. And it's like, yeah, because they don't care about any of the fights. Like it's upsetting that the fights are even happening. Like mm -hmm. the show version, it's upsetting that Ares is fighting a 12 year old yeah in in any way and he's excited to kill this 12 year old like that's upsetting that percy is having to fight a god when he was a 12 year old tiny little baby and his two friends have to sit there and just pray that he doesn't die and yeah. like that's the only thing they can do like it's horrible that it's happening in the first place that's why the fights aren't that long and so like when you take that away of from it you just like literally like suck the soul out of all of these characters and if you do that, then it's like every other stupid YA book that I ignored. Yeah. Why would anybody care about that anymore? 